Just after, I don't know if this was a coincidence or not, just after Zelensky's speech uh, in front of the U.S. Congress, Putin made a slew of comments uh, about his, uh, what he calls his military operation yeah. um, in, in Ukraine. Can you, can you give, give us yeah. a sense of, of what that tells us about him? Let's take a trip into Putin's mind, uh, courtesy of an invitation from Putin himself. Here's what he's been saying, basically. And, and it's significant because it really goes to the heart of the questions. People are wondering, well, going in these talks between Ukraine in Russia, are they ready to make concessions? Is there perhaps a softening in the Russian tone? Is there that these negotiations might actually uh, be taking a turn for the better? Well, let's hear what Putin himself is saying. Putin basically uh, has just said the special operation, military operation, as Russia uh, calls it, you can't call it anything else, certainly not a war, uh, has been going according to plan. All of Russia's tasks will be achieved. Uh, he said that the West is seeking to dismember Russia, um, that it will not be successful. He went on to say that the West is an empire of lies. Uh, and that the West will only end up strengthening Russia. So, you know, I've used the words, not you, but I've used the words with respect to Putin before, paranoid, grievance-filled. I've even controversially used the word delirium, but it's not really my word. A lot of people have said, is he delirious in, in his sort of insular, um, you know, mindset, not really looking out uh, beyond. Uh, he basically said that he had no choice he had to recognize uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, uh, self-proclaimed republics in the east, which sort of the precursor to this entire invasion. Why did he have to recognize them? Repeating the entrenched uh, Russian pro state propaganda to stop genocide, as he sees it. So that narrative, as much as ever, Charles, still embedded in uh, Vladimir Putin's mindset. He does not veer from it at all. Um, he said the myth of Western well-being is crumbling. Uh, the problems uh, of the West are only going to increase. Uh, I, I jotted these things down because, like, one is more sort of a uh, superlative upon superlative. Um, he said Ukraine will not be uh, – Ukraine will not – he won't let Ukraine become a stronghold for the offensive on our country, meaning Russia. And this goes to the heart of that other narrative, that this was a bunch of Nazi, a highly militarized, potentially nuclear-armed or soon-to-have nuclear weapons regime uh, posing a, a clear and present existential threat to Russia, that it was an offensive that Ukraine was threatening against Russia, that Ukraine was about to attack the Donbass region uh, if Russia hadn't acted first uh, to preempt that. This is all the narrative. It, what it suggests to me, the fact that he's saying this, you could say, cynics could say, well, he's just saying that. He's trying to stand tough and stay firm. He's actually privately fretting a lot. No, he actually, actually believes this. Uh, the narrative hasn't changed because there are no naysayers in his midst, no one who dares to or has the inclination to uh, say that two plus two equals four. So he keeps hearing the same thing. He becomes more and more uh, insular. He locks out more and more people. More and more people become afraid to See, to, 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 to say a, a dissident word to him. Uh, and meanwhile, the crackdown and the climate of repression in Russia itself grows. So it's, I would say it's a little bit chilling when you see Putin continue to, uh, to harp on and to, to, to uh, repeat these same narratives, these same lines, showing that there has been no shift in his thinking, at least publicly, the way he uh, you know, declares it, there's been no shift in his thinking for the, for, over the for three weeks of this war.